Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class today. Thank you for connecting to the class um, this morning. And uh, we are continuing our learning on uh, urban church planting. I've started the recording. Let's pray and uh, we will proceed with the class. Okay, so current sister, can you please pray? Yes, sir. Father God, we just come before your throne once again, Father God. Father God, thanking you for the day. Father God, thanking you to subject. Father God, thanking you once again. We just, uh, we just going to learn, Father God, your word. Father God, help us to understand all things, Father God, and apply to your kingdom. For thanking you, Father God, and those who students willing to join, Father God, to help them to join the class, Father God. Thanking you, Father God. Almighty Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So um, yesterday, uh, as we started talking about um, uh, this whole section on personal preparation, um, we were um, we went through a few points on that are very important for us to prepare ourselves to go and plant a church or start a ministry, right? So th these are things that you and I can do to prepare ourselves to start a church or plant a ministry. But what we did emphasize yesterday was uh, these things are not only needed when we in the initial phase when we start, but we need to practice them throughout. So we need to keep them uh, throughout our journey, uh, throughout, our, uh, throughout our life in ministry. It's just something we live by constantly. So I'm just going to go ahead and share the PDF so we can look at it. And uh, we will just quickly review these points. So we said uh, we need to be spiritually strong, uh, maintain a consistent personal spiritual life. Um, so let me just turn this down here. Second, uh, we need to be equipped and we need to continue, continually be equipped. Right? So it's not just a one-time thing that we do and then we say, okay, it's over. No, we continue. Keep on learning. Keep on equipping yourself uh, throughout your life's journey. The third thing we talked about was be clear of your calling and vision, uh, especially as somebody is going to pioneer, you are the person uh, who's going to have the vision. You're the vision bearer. So if you're going to go start a church or start a ministry, uh, it's very important that you maintain that vision, you stay true to that calling and vision. Uh, we did mention yesterday that the vision may be enlarged, God may expand the vision. Uh, the vision in some ways may be redefined or modified in certain ways, but stay true to that vision that God puts in front of you. Uh, don't get, uh, um, don't let the vision dim, but you lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing. And don't divert, don't, you know, avoid diversion or distraction. Okay, so those were three things. Uh, number four, another important part of our preparation. And again, this is something, you know, that we have to be ready for throughout our, uh, our work, is that uh, we must be willing to work twice as hard as others. I mean, be willing to work more than other people. First Corinthians chapter 15, Verse 10. Can somebody turn there? First Corinthians 15, verse 10. Can somebody read that? Yeah. 
anyone? First Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Go ahead. But, but by the grace of God, I am not there. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I never more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Mm. That was what the Apostle Paul is saying here. He says, you know, I am what I am by the, by the grace of God, but I labored more abundantly than all the other apostles, than they all, meaning the other apostles. So, you know, Paul is acknowledging something here. He's recognizing the grace of God on his life, that God had a call, and God had extended grace on his life. But he's also acknowledging the fact that he worked twice as hard. I mean, maybe not. He just uses the phrase "more abundantly." It means he worked. He worked much more than all the other apostles. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that this is the only reason why Paul, you know, wrote so many epistles and went and started so many churches, but this is one of the reasons. That is, he he worked more abundantly than the other apostles. And even his ability to work much more, he says, it was not me, but the grace of God. That means God empowered him to labor, <clears throat> sorry, to labor more abundantly <clears throat> sorry, than the others. So, especially when you are pioneering, uh, you have to be willing to work twice as hard as others. Now, why do I say twice as hard? It means, you know, you have to be different as a pioneer, as a leader. You know, you, you, it's not, it's very rare that you and I can say, well, we just do, a, do the bare minimum and things will happen. No, uh, especially... Uh, in times when uh, you know you are getting started or in times you're moving ahead into something new you will have to you know work extra putting in longer hours than the others putting in more effort than the others uh, because you are the leader and you can't look at them and say well they're just you know doing so much so I'll also do that much no you've got to do much more um, not because others uh, you know, are, are not hard workers, but you have the responsibility and you have the vision. And so, you know, it, you have to put that much more effort to keep things going. And if uh, you slack, uh, if, if your effort becomes weak, then others will also, you know, tend to uh, just become less intense in their work. So, uh, so when you are pushing and you are demonstrating that intensity and um, that commitment, then that inspires similar intensity and commitment from other people. So as an important part of uh, church planting or starting a ministry, you've got to be willing to work. If, if, you know, if you want something easy, if you want to do you know, just, uh, you know, okay, I'll do just eight hours of work and that's it. Well, uh, then pioneering will take a lot more than just that. It, it re really requires a lot more effort if you're going to be uh, starting something, if you're going to be pioneering something. And not only when you're pioneering or starting, but every time you hit this stage when you have to push to a new level, when you have to you know, maybe start a new area of ministry or you know, you've got to be willing to work. You've got to be willing to push as hard as the others. You know, and uh, throughout our journey here over the last 20 years, and I can look back and see, you know, time and time again, time and time again, every time we wanted to uh, step into something new, expand, you know, there was just this intense work, intense effort, 
uh, that uh, as a team we had to put in and then you know something new came out of it we were able to push into something new so both you as a leader and uh, the team peop- the people that you need to be working on that uh, will have to you know put in that much more effort so remember what paul said he said i am what i am by the grace of god yet i labored more abundantly than the other apostles so he worked much more than them and even that ability to work much more is given to him by the grace of god okay uh, another one number 5 is uh we must learn to pray plan prepare but don't be hasty in uh in stepping out in getting started or in growing okay so could somebody read proverbs 21 and verse 5 please proverbs 21 and verse 5 for us please proverbs 21 the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as hasty leads to poverty mm. so notice what it says in the latter part second half of this verse those were hasty that means they're in a hurry to you know succeed they're in a hurry to make it big they're in a hurry to you know to do things it leads to poverty like uh, in english be there's this old phrase haste makes waste so sometimes when you're in a hurry you do things that actually end up becoming waste so 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 also in in uh, in the work that we're doing uh, we pray we plan we prepare then we start to work you must be willing to be patient uh, in the work you're doing right don't be hasty and don't get discouraged just because you don't see things growing uh, at the speed at which you would like it to right so you, you know we may have a plan okay maybe in 2 years i will reach so many people or in 2 years i'll become so big or whatever the plan is the growth plan but sometimes it may not all it may you know it may, it may not happen that way it's good to pray it's good to plan it's good to prepare and we need to do that but then it may not always turn out that in 2 years you will reach that number uh, or in in, in um, may not always happen that way but then you don't get discouraged you stay the course you keep working he says here the plans of the diligent that means you are diligent you continue to stay the course you continue to work you continue to do what you have to do uh, and and you know that you will reach that goal you will get there right so that's another thing in that we need as part of our preparation mentally we must be ready for um you know the the what i i usually say the long haul that means you're here for the long run or many times i tell myself you know we are here for the marathon we're not here for a sprint you know it's not like you know this is 100 meters and you will get the work done no this is a marathon this is something you're going to be doing uh for the long term uh to pioneer the church or to start a ministry and uh, you know while it's good to expect growth and so on um it may not always happen quickly or as quickly as we wish right so that's when we need to be patient stay the course now uh if you turn to psalm 127 uh turn with me please to psalm 127 and could somebody read for us verse 1 psalm 127 verse 1 unless the lord builds 
the horse the house they labor in vain who build it unless the lord guards the city the watchman says a walk in vain a walk in vain okay thank you so unless god builds we labor in vain who build it you know so um and many times i tell myself as well you know while uh definitely we have to do our part in in the ministry in the work we're doing but ultimately it's the lord who's going to build the house so unless the lord builds our efforts are useless so if god is building it we just go with the way and in the in 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 step and in time with god you know we may be very eager to get some results but no just go in step and in time with god let god build in first corinthians 3 the apostle paul said you know it is god who gives the increase it is god who gives the increase so let the increase come from god now um we will be tempted as human beings to try to force growth or try to force the increase or try to force the building of you know the ministry or the organization whatever we are doing uh sometimes we may use uh, our own abilities there's nothing wrong so we have to do our work we have to do our part but let god do the building let god bring the increase you work and you say lord i'm going to be faithful i'm going to keep doing what you've called me to do i'll do it well i'll do it diligently to the best that i can but i'm trusting you to build the house i'm trusting you to give the increase right so let god give the increase let god build the house rather than trying rather than us forcing that increase by our own efforts right so by our own efforts we can you know maybe gather lots of people or make everything look big uh, but then that won't stand that won't stay through time it'll all come collapsing down right so be faithful pray plan prepare and do your work patiently uh, and let god build the house let god bring the increase don't be hasty to try and do it yourself okay the next point point number 6 is we must be emotionally strong uh what do we mean by that it means that you know part of our battles when we are pioneering a work or when you're starting something are the emotional struggles that we face and these emotional struggles that means mental right mental these emotional struggles can come because of various reasons sometimes they can come because you know satan tries to discourage us there could be these discouraging uh thoughts coming in to your mind and this could those could be directly from the enemy sometimes the discouragement can come just by our own weakness that means we feel like giving up uh we get faint we get faint hearted and uh you know we tend to give up easily and sometimes this discouragement can come from other people so people don't understand us so they may speak very or things that discourage us and so discouragement comes but we must learn to be strong to overcome discouragement and of course our strength comes from god emotionally also our strength comes from god but you you and i need to have the ability to rise above discouragement so let's just look at some scriptures we go with me to joshua chapter 1 and um uh, let's read verse 
Joshua 1 verse 9. Somebody could read that for us, please. Joshua 1 verse 9. Joshua 1 verse 9. Somebody can read it. This is my commandment. Um, Be strong and courageous. Oh. Courageous. Do mm -hmm. not be afraid of this courage. For the Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go. Amen. Okay. So, um, you know, actually in, in this psalm, um, three times, three times, verse 6, verse 7, and again in verse 9, uh, we're seeing God telling Joshua, be strong and of good courage, or be strong and courageous. Okay? So uh, Joshua was just taking charge, you know, taking responsibility of uh, leading these people and chapter one Joshua chapter one is his uh, commissioning by God as he as he gets ready to start this new assignment for his for his life and um, God is telling Joshua over and over again he repeats it Joshua I want you to be strong I want you to be courageous I want you to be courageous, meaning emotionally you got to be strong, you got to be courageous as you go on this journey, as you take on this responsibility. So emotionally, we have to be strong. Discouragements will come. There will be uh, discouragements because even of the circumstances, situations, there will be oppositions, uh, hindrances, all kinds of things happening. But we have to be strong and we have to remind ourselves, you know, why are we here? Um, uh, why are you, you know, wh why are you going to, uh, why are you doing what you're doing? And, and we, we need to be emotionally encouraged. We need to know how to encourage ourselves and keep going. And so be emotionally strong. Uh, don't let people discourage you. Don't let situations discourage you. Don't let Satan discourage you, uh, be strong, okay? Uh, so we need to develop that ability. Now, how do you do that? You know, so look at how you handle challenges today. When you face a difficulty, when you face a challenge, how do you handle it? Do you get all overwhelmed and like that's the end of everything? You just become unproductive, you, do, you give up? Or do you have the ability to say, look, I know I'm facing a challenge, but I know how to rise up above it and, uh, and, and you know, overcome it. And so you look at yourself. How are you doing it? How are you handling difficult situations today? Are you able to overcome? Because definitely when you start out to pioneer a church or you start out to you know, start out a Christian ministry, you are going to face challenges. And sometimes these challenges can be pretty big. They can be, you know, sometimes intimidating, overwhelming at times. And that's when you need to have the ability to be strong in God and overcome those challenges. So to prepare for that, see how you're handling challenges today. How are you overcoming difficulties today in life? And do you have the, I'm using the word mechanism or the, the ability emotional, you know, mental ability to think through and overcome challenges so that you're emotionally strong, okay? Number seven, uh, another important part of our personal preparation is 
to get things order in order in your personal life. Okay. Uh, don't let personal weaknesses become an entry point for Satan's disruptive attempts. So, you know, if there are personal weaknesses, then at some point in the journey, the enemy is going to come knocking on those areas of weaknesses. He's trying to gain, trying to get a foothold. He's trying to come in. And of course, where is he going to attack or where is he going to try to gain entrance? It's through those areas of personal weaknesses. So, you know, uh, although you may be strong in certain areas, if there are personal weaknesses, the enemy is going to come with his attacks in those areas of weakness. Now, only you, maybe a few people close to you may know what your personal weaknesses are. And so you need to be on guard and you need to strengthen those pers those areas of personal weaknesses, right? Um, and especially um, in your family. Now, uh, at some point, uh, uh, those of you, you know, all of, as, as right now your students, at some point you will get married, you'll have your family, most of you, and uh, uh, you need to guard your family uh, because when you're doing a church plant, when you're doing ministry, it's not just you who's going to feel the pressure, but it's your family that's going to feel the pressure, your spouse, your children. They will all feel uh, the the pressure of being in ministry. You know, people have expectations. Uh, people expect, you know, the pastor's wife or the whoever, you know, the, the spouse of the person doing ministry to be a certain way, the family to be a certain. And of course, God has given us instructions, and um, and and people expect certain things, and so they will they will feel the pressure of uh, the work. So you need to be strong there. You need to be strong in your personal life. And later on, once you know you have your own family, uh, make sure your family is also strong so that you can stand up to the pressures of uh, planting a church or planting a ministry. Okay, let me pause here. I heard somebody having a question. Thomas, you have a question? Please go ahead. Go ahead, you can ask um, a question. Actually, uh, every time this comes fast, uh, when emotionally strong men, when, when we face the challenges and the things in the ministry in the startup stage, uh, I know it's quite uh, difficult to overcome it. As you said, that will affect the people, those with the family as well. Um, I don't know how to, uh, as I'm trying to overcome it, uh, any suggestions? Uh, I'm expecting most. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, um, so one is, of course, you know, uh, to some extent, to some extent. Uh, we are able to handle situations, right? Emotionally ourselves, that, you know, you can sit down, talk, plan, discuss, resolve. But what I would strongly recommend is to get help when you need it. Right? That's why we are part of a, we are part of a body. We are part of a of the church, and uh, none of us have uh, everything. None of us have uh, everything that is required and all that it takes. But we are part of the body of Christ, and so one of the things uh, we must learn to do is 
when we need to be encouraged. Uh, we need to be able to reach out for help and say, hey, I need help. You know, I, uh, I need somebody to speak encouragement into my life. Uh, I need to be able to receive that encouragement or the guidance or the help, the help that I need, whatever I need. So I, I, I would say that it's a good thing to reach out for help when you feel that, look, whatever I, whatever I, I, I'm doing whatever I know to do, but I feel that I need something more. Then what do you do? Reach out for help. Um, talk to people who you trust. Talk to people whom you know are mature, who have had experience in the areas where you feel you need help and reach out to them and say, hey, I just, can you, you know, I just want to talk to you. And uh, then you share and they'll be able to speak. They'll be able to impart help and strength. Then you are in, you're, you're encouraged and then you go on, right? So that's something I would recommend for all of us, you know, uh, that when we need emotional strength, emotional encouragement, uh, when we need to be able to handle some of our own challenges, our situations, uh, we may not be able to see things very clearly. Uh, but if we have, you know, one or two people whom we can speak to and share our struggles with, and they're able to speak into our lives, be an encouragement, uh, that's a good way. That's a great way to keep going because that's why God has put us, you know, in the body. Is that okay, Thomas? I... It's okay, Pastor. Yeah. So that's something would, that can um, be done. Shade. Sorry, uh, sorry, Thomas. I didn't hear you. The acceptable thing, some uh, thoughts going in our mind uh, where it's very difficult to contain. When we uh, speak to somebody, at least we'll get some increase. Uh, you, you shared the valuable points. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's. All right. So uh, be emotionally strong. Number six, number seven, get things in order in your personal life. Okay. So be very careful there, you know. Now, the let me just say a few more things on number seven and then you will go to number eight now in number seven you see the temptation for many of us is we only look at our strengths which is good and then we say okay you know i'm strong in this this is enough example maybe a person is a good preacher a good, you know, a good preacher in the Bible, of the Bible. So I said, look, you know, I know I can start a church and I can serve people because I love the word of God. I know the word of God and I can preach well. But let's say the same person, you know, and it could be a man or a woman, it doesn't matter, uh, has a personal weakness. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, in the area of money, or in the area of uh, their sexuality, uh, you know, in the area of their, uh, uh, no, you know, their attraction to the opposite sex, that, that, that you know, that's an area of weakness. Now, nobody else may know it, but they know it. And they may be, okay, they, are, they have the strength, which is maybe they're very good in preaching and teaching the Bible. Wonderful but they have a weakness. Now, if they neglect addressing that weakness in their personal life, because nobody else knows it, and okay, they just, you know, they just get the ministry started and, you know, wonderful, they are going to plant a church or they're going to start some Christian organization, they're going forward uh, and they're going ahead. But, you know, where do you think the enemy will attack them? 
if he wants to disrupt the work. He's obviously going to come in their area of weakness. Right? Now, if they neglect addressing it, what will happen? You know, at some point there will be a failure and it will be a personal failure, right? Because this was something in their personal life which they didn't address. They just, look, you know, they just covered it or they pretended it's not there. But that's exactly where the enemy will attack and uh, uh, they will have a personal failure and it will disrupt the work. So what must we do? We must be aware of our weakness and then we must strengthen those areas. Okay, I know this area. I need to be careful. I need to protect myself. I need to build myself up in the word of God. I need to put some fences just to keep myself safe uh, in this area and so on. Okay, so get those things ordered in your personal life. I'm not saying, you know, we can foresee every temptation that comes, but Along the journey, keep your eyes open. Like the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Always be on guard uh, to protect your personal life, protect your family, and uh, because you know, you're going to be journeying together. Number eight is this. Um, develop the ability to draw strength, motivation, and discipline from God. Often, along the journey, you have to, you know, we just use this phrase, you have to stoke your own fire. That means be motivated from within. So this number eight is you have to be able to motivate yourself to keep yourself strong through uh, you know, your dependence on God. Now, I know I just shared a little word of advice with uh, Thomas about, you know, how we can get help from people. And that's very important. That's why we must be in fellowship with, you know, other ministers and so on. So that's important. But uh, this being motivated uh, of, or stoking your own fire, keeping your fire burning, you know, that's something we must learn how to do ourselves. You know, that means you must be on fire. For example, when you're going to minister to people, you know, you're, you know, you're expecting God to use you or you, we are expecting God to use us to ignite a passion or ignite a fire in other people. So through our preaching, through our ministry, we're able to motivate them and ignite their, you know, their flame. But sometimes you may not have somebody doing it for you. You need to be able to kindle that fire inside you and to know how to draw strength from God, to stay motivated, to stay disciplined, um, and, and, and to keep your own fire burning, right? And it's kind of connected to what... Um, I had mentioned earlier, which is basically, if you and I maintain a strong personal spiritual life, which is point number one, right? We can learn to keep our own fire burning. Otherwise, what will happen? Things will tend to fizzle out. You know, uh, we may start neglecting things in our own lives. And that's what happened to, uh, you know, even Timothy. Uh, we know in Second Timothy chapter one, uh, verses six and seven, Paul he wrote to Timothy. He said, "Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy and through the laying on of hands. Stir up the gift of God which is in you. That means uh, you fan into flame. You make the flame brighter. Make the flame stronger." You fan into flame the gift of God that is in you. So, you know, people had prayed over Timothy. They had prophesied over Timothy. Uh, he had received impartation. There were spiritual gifts that were activated in his life. But for some reason, uh, he had neglected it. And Paul is telling Timothy, 
stir up the gift. That means you stir up the gift in your own life. You stir up the gift of God in you. Right? So that's something we must learn to do. That is, you go back to God in word, in the word and in prayer and say, God, I want to stir up the gift and I want the gift of God to uh, flow through me. To I want the fire to burn bright. Uh, I want, you know, a st whatever strength and motivation, we, we learn to derive it from God. So learn to go back to God to kindle a flame in that fire. So we must learn to do it now. That means today, are you able to do that? Do you have the ability to go to God and keep yourself motivated? Keep yourself, keep your own fire burning. Are you able to do that? If not, okay, develop the ability to do it. Why? Because along the journey, we will need to do that many times. As you are pastoring or you're pioneering a church or leading a ministry, Time and time again, you need to go back to God and just say, God, I need to, you know, I, I need you to kindle that fire in me one more time. God, I want to be strong. I keep the fire burning strong. I can't let the flame weaken. Right? And uh, Paul writes in Galatians 1, 15 and 16, you know, when he, when he received the call of God, uh, let's read that, Galatians 1, 15 and 16. Somebody could read that for us. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. Somebody can read it, please. Go ahead. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately conform with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So Paul is talking about his own life. And he says, you know, when God called me, so obviously he's referring to his um, encounter with Jesus and he called him to preach he says you know I didn't immediately confer with flesh and blood that means you know he didn't go and immediately talk to others about his call so in some sense and, and, and I want to say this in a, in, a, in, a, in a you know put it in a proper way that is in a healthy manner he had independence so, so there is this balance we must maintain. That is, we are all dependent on each other. That's why we need each other, which I had just mentioned a little bit earlier. We need to derive strength from each other. We are all dependent. But also we need to maintain healthy independence. That means the ability to understand the call of God on our lives, and to be able to pursue it without conferring with flesh and blood, without you know getting the approval or uh, the support of man, Paul said, "I didn't have that," you know. So he says, "I didn't confer with flesh and blood." That means when he started out, he just you know God had spoken to him, so he started out. Now, of course, later on he does go to Jerusalem. He does meet the, you know, he meets um, James and I think it was. John, he meets some of the leaders there, and then later on he gets to know other leaders as well. So eventually he does, and he does work with lots of other leaders. But in the early part of his ministry, he had to stand alone. You know, he didn't have anybody coming and patting him on his back and saying, you know, you've been called to be an apostle or anything like that. He says, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. I couldn't go and discuss my call and uh, the purpose of God with anybody. I had to stand on my own. So I'm just pointing to that to show that, you know, we need that ability. It's important to be able to uh, stand uh, and sometimes stand alone. Uh, but thank God uh, there are people around us that we can reach out for help uh, when we need it. 
um, and uh, receive input from other people. And Paul did that later on. You know, he he had people around him as he ministered. So he didn't do it all alone. But there was a time, when, especially in the starting days, early days, where he had to, you know, journey alone. So we will stop here. And, uh, you know, I'm just covering certain thoughts or points that are very important for us to prepare ourselves personally for the journey ahead, right? We talked about being spiritually strong, getting equipped, being clear if you're calling and vision, being willing to work twice as hard as others, uh, you know, being patient, don't be hasty. Things may not happen as quickly as you want, but you've got to stay the course. Uh, being emotionally strong when, uh, you know, you're facing discouragement and all kinds of things. Uh, be strong. Uh, keep your personal life in order. Uh, guard your areas of weakness. Uh, and uh, number eight, uh, develop the ability to, you know, to keep your fire burning all the time. Uh, that you have to go to God and you have to keep your fire burning to pursue a vision God has given you. Now, we do receive through other people. God has placed us in a body, and so that is also important. Okay. Um, let's pause here. Are there any questions before we pray and dismiss? Are, are these things clear so far? Clear, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So... Let's take a moment just to pray, and then we will wrap up. But I will continue this next week. We'll talk about the other points, and try to put these check, check, you know put these things into your life now, uh, so that in the days to come, you know you'll be strong, and you'll be ready to do the things God's called you to do. Okay, let's pray. Anyone could pray with us as a class and dismiss us, please. Thomas, why don't you pray with us, please? I'm about to ask the uh, pastor, so if you pray for us, for uh, <laughs> to prove the emotional strength, if you pray today, it will be sure. nice. I, I will do that. I will do that. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you uh, that we could gather together and uh, just spend some time learning and thank you for the opportunity to share uh, some of these learnings with uh, others in the class. And Father, I pray for those in the class and those who would join us on the e-learning, uh, for all the students, God, that uh, each one, Lord, will be encouraged. Like you told Joshua, be strong and very courageous. I pray that each one would be strengthened emotionally as well, that uh, no matter what things come that discourage us, that sometimes seem to upset us, uh, disrupt uh, the calm, the confidence inside of us, God, I pray that you will strengthen, you will encourage, you will keep us strong uh, to keep to continued journey forward. So I pray your grace. I pray your encouragement. I pray your strength into each one's life. Let every person be strong, be courageous to keep moving forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Amen. I was encouraged and blessed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thomas, Kieran, Dave. Now, just, you know, be assured that uh, you know, if you guys, any of you need to speak, uh, you can uh, email or message me or any of our pastors, you know, and just anytime you need encouragement in your ministries, uh, we are there. So feel free to just connect with us in you know, outside class. We can talk on the phone or do a Google Meet call or a Zoom call or whatever, you know, so just reach out. We are there to be able to help and encourage, okay? God bless you all. Have a good uh, rest of the day. Talk to you soon. See you tomorrow.
Thanks. Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you.